Hello everyone, my name is Alex and today I'm going to show you how to dual boot Mac OS and Windows on your PC. This is actually possible, it's not a scam. As you can see I have Mac OS working perfectly on this computer. Now if you want to have just Mac OS on your computer you can follow this other video that I made a few weeks ago which will allow you to install Mac OS on a single drive. You can also follow that guide if you already have Windows on one drive and you want to install Mac OS onto another. However, if you want to install Windows and Mac OS onto the same drive, so you want to partition a drive and install Windows and Mac OS onto it, this video is here for you. It's very important that your PC is Intel based. It's possible to install Mac OS onto AMD based computers, but it's much trickier and this guide will only apply to Intel based systems. It's also important that you know exactly what motherboard you have, what CPU model and what graphics card you have. Let's not waste any more time and start with the video. In order to proceed with the installation, you will need a real Mac, a Hackintosh or a virtual machine. You may perhaps borrow a Mac from a friend and a USB flash drive of at least 16 gigabytes. Theoretically, 8 gigs should be fine, but I've had problems with 8 gig flash drives in the past, so I would recommend at least 16. It's also important that you only use USB 2.0 ports on your computer throughout the whole installation. Even if your flash drive is USB 3.0, only use a USB 2.0 port. You will also need another flash drive of at least 8 gigabytes that we will be using for the Windows installation. Plug in the 8 gig flash drive into your computer and go to this website. Link will be in the description. Now scroll down and click on download tool. Once downloaded, open the executable file. It will load for a bit and once done you will need to click on accept, then select create installation media for another PC and click next. Here you'll need to uncheck the box at the bottom, choose your language and edition and for architecture select 64 bit. Once done click next, to this message click OK. Then you'll need to select USB flash drive, click next and select your flash drive. To make sure that you're selecting the correct device, I would suggest checking in File Explorer the letter of your flash drive. As you can see in my case, the letter is F. Click next and the program will start downloading Windows 10. This might take a while, so you'll have to wait. Once finished, you can click finish and the program will close. At this stage, you can eject your USB flash drive and we'll move on to the Mac. On the Mac, Hackintosh or virtual machine with Mac OS, you need to ensure that the system language is set to English. That is because some of the programs we're going to use require the system to be set to English. So go to system preferences and change your language to English if it's not already so and reboot your computer. Now go to the link that I left in the description that, that leads you to the Tony Mac x86 website and look for Unibeast 7 and Multibeast 9. Now in order to download files from this website you will need to have an account so register if you already haven't done so. After downloading Unibeast 7 and Multibeast 9 put them on your desktop so they are ready to be used. Now double click on the zip files to extract them and once we've done so we can delete the zip files. Now we'll need to prepare our flash drive, so plug it into your computer and we'll need to open up Disk Utility. To do so, press Command and Space and type in Disk Utility, then press Enter. You can also find it in the Applications folder and then in the Utility folder. Once we've opened up Disk Utility, locate your USB flash drive and click on the non-indented part. The indented part is the partition, which is not what we need. So click on the non-indented part. Once you've done that, at the top click on Erase rename the flash drive to USB, change the format to macOS extended journal and finally as partition map choose GUID partition map. Now click on erase and wait for the process to be finished. Once finished click on done and you can close disk utility. Now we'll need to download macOS so in order to do that go to the Mac App Store and look for macOS Sierra. Once you've found it just click download and wait for it to be downloaded. Once that's finished, we're ready to create our bootable USB drive. So let's open up Unibeast, click continue, continue and agree. And on this screen, you will need to select your USB flash drive that we named USB. Make sure that it's highlighted in blue, which means that it's been selected. Now click continue. 
select Sierra, click continue. And now if you have a newer computer, you'll most likely have a UEFI BIOS. So select UEFI. If you have an older computer, which has a very, very simple and basic uh, BIOS, select legacy boot mode. If you have a very old graphics card from either ATI or NVIDIA, you need to select one of these two options. It gives you some examples of graphics card that need the settings. So if your graphics card is not among the ones listed, you don't need to select anything. If you're using integrated graphics, same thing goes here. Don't select anything. Click continue, continue, type in your password and click OK. Now the installation will start. This process can take a very long time. I remember when I did this for the first time, it took me an hour to get this done. So just wait patiently. Once finished, copy the multi-beast folder inside your USB flash drive. Now eject the flash drive and let's move on to the computer onto which we want to install Mac OS. Now boot the machine and go into the BIOS or UEFI. Make sure that you have disabled fast boot completely. Also, if you have any specific settings for Windows 8 or 10, disable them or select other OS. Then you need to disable your serial ports because macOS does not support them. Finally, you'll need to disable VTD. Now we can save the settings and quit the BIOS. Now plug in the flash drive with macOS and go into your boot selection menu. Here you'll need to find your USB flash drive and if you chose UEFI on UniBeast, you will need to select the option that has the UEFI prefix. Select that one and press enter. If you had legacy, then just choose your USB flash drive. You will now see this new boot selection menu. You may have several options or you may only have one. It depends on your system. Now you'll need to select the option that says external on it. You'll hopefully see the Apple logo and a progress bar. Just give it some time to boot. Once booted, you'll need to select your language and click on the arrow. Here, do not click continue. You will need to go at the top to the option bar, click on utilities, and then click on disk utility. Here, select the drive onto which you want to install macOS. Again, select the non-indented part, then go on erase, rename it to Hackintosh, format is macOS extended journaled, and scheme is GUID partition map. Click on erase and wait for the process to be finished. Now you'll need to reselect the non-indented part of the drive. At the top, click on partition. And now you'll need to click on the little plus below the circle. Here, by dragging this little circle, you can resize the partitions. And once they're the desired size, name the second one Windows. This one will also need to be formatted in macOS Extended Journal. It doesn't make sense, but trust me, it's necessary. Once done, click apply and partition and wait for the process to be finished. Once finished, click on done and you can close disk utility. Now you may click continue on this screen, continue and agree. And now you'll need to select the drive that we just formatted. So select the drive named Hackintosh if you name the Hackintosh. Now click continue and the installation will start. Once finished, click on Reboot and you'll need to boot again into your flash drive the same way that we did before. So go into your boot selection menu. If you had UEFI on UniBeast, you need to select your flash drive with the UEFI prefix. If you chose legacy mode, just select your flash drive. And now on this screen, you will not need to click on external, but you'll need to find the option that says at the bottom, boot Mac OS 10 from Hackintosh. This is the first boot, so it can take a long time. Just be patient. Once booted, you will need to choose your country and keyboard layout. Now, if you want to, you can enable location services, and I would recommend signing into your Apple ID, but you don't have to if you want to. You can always do that later. Now you can set up your computer however you want. Uh, the important thing is at the end to disable uh, send diagnostics and usage data. Once finished, you will need to go into your USB flash drive and open up MultiBeast. Select Quick Start and select the same boot mode that you chose in UniBeast. Then go onto Drivers. Here you'll need to do your own research to find out exactly what drivers you need for your system because every system is different. The only thing that everyone needs to install is under USB. If you have USB 3 ports on your computer, you will need to install third-party USB 3 support. And for everyone, absolutely everyone, you'll need to install increase max port limit. Under Customize, if in UniBeast you selected Inject, ATI or NVIDIA, you will need to do so here as well. 
If you have integrated graphics, you'll need to select your integrated graphics series. Now go on build, click on install, type in your password, click OK, and wait for the installation to finish. Once finished, restart your computer. Now you'll need to take out your flash drive so you can boot directly from your hard drive. You'll see the same menu, but there should be no external option, so you need to select Boot Mac OS X from Hackintosh again. And once rebooted, we will have finished the installation process. Congratulations, you've installed macOS onto your PC. You now effectively have a Hackintosh. One little tiny thing I would suggest is keep the multi-beast folder somewhere safe so you always have it in case anything goes wrong. Also, you might have noticed that the way macOS handles the mouse scrolling wheel is quite different. So it scrolls the opposite way. So to fix that, go into System Preferences, Mouse and disable Natural Scroll. Now you can insert your Windows flash drive and reboot your computer. Go into your boot selection menu and select your flash drive with the UEFI prefix. Now you'll need to wait for the Windows setup to load. Once the setup has loaded, choose your language and country and keyboard layout. Then click next and click install now. If you have a product key, you can insert it now. Of course, you can always do that later. If you already had Windows 10 installed on this machine, you don't need to, to insert your product key, it should automatically recognize the PC after the installation. Make sure that you select the correct edition of Windows 10 and then click Next. Then tick the I agree box and click Next. And here it's important that you choose custom installation. Here you'll see all the partitions that you have in your computer. You will need to find the one that you created earlier with macOS. I would recommend using the size of the partition to find it. And once you've found it, select it and click delete. Then select it again and click next. Now the installation will start and it will take a while. Once done, your computer will prompt to be rebooted. So click on restart and it should automatically boot into Windows. Once booted, follow the setup process, and once you're at the desktop, install all the necessary drivers for your computer. Once you've done that, restart your computer. Now make sure that everything works correctly, such as your graphics card, check if you have internet connection, and once everything's been checked, you can reboot and go into the BIOS. Now you'll need to go into your boot device order. Here you'll need to put at the very top the option that has the name of your drive with the UEFI prefix, not the Clover one and not the Windows one. It must be the one with the UEFI prefix. Now save settings and exit your BIOS. It should automatically boot into Clover. Now we'll need to try to boot Windows from Clover, so go into the option that says boot EFI from Microsoft EFI. Press enter and if you manage to boot Windows, you've successfully installed Windows and Mac OS onto the same drive. Finally, we did it. We've got Windows and Mac OS running on our PC off of the same drive. In my case, it's one SSD split into two partitions running Windows and Mac OS. And when I boot my PC, I can choose which operating system to use. Massive shout out to Tony Mac x86 and all the people that work on that website. If you have any problems, don't hesitate and visit their forum. You will most likely find an answer to your problems. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and share it with friends that might be interested. Thank you for watching. Wagwan. Well,